Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. I apologize for the terrible lighting behind me, but I brought you into one of our storage units because uh, I want to give you a sneak preview of some of the pieces I'm getting in for my traveling exhibit. It might be a bit noisy. There's people out here working on uh, yards and cars driving by, so it's probably going to be a mess sound-wise, but hopefully you'll be able to hear it. All right, let's get into it. Arshad from Port Louis, Mauritius. I believe Mauritius is in... Uh, is an island off the coast of Africa, I believe. Uh, Arshad asked, did Velociraptor and other feathered dinosaurs mate like modern birds? That's a tough one because the fossil record tells us a lot, but it doesn't tell us everything. One of the things it doesn't tell us is whether or not these animals stayed together in mated pairs, whether they just mated uh, indiscretionately like, um, uh, like some birds do. There's no way of knowing that for sure. Here's my opinion. It appears that dinosaurs like Velociraptor were communal animals, meaning they lived together in groups. When you have animals that live together in groups, generally there's a hierarchy. Something, somebody leads the group, whether that's a male or a female, uh, I don't know. But if they are uh, communal animals, then more than likely there was an alpha male and an alpha female, meaning they were the top breeders in the family. Um, and as time went on, that would change. But best of my knowledge would be they probably didn't mate for life because um, I think they were more of a big group kind of uh, group sort of animal. And normally we don't find that in, in that, uh, those kind of animals. All right, Joe from Wall Township, New Jersey. Hello, Dinosaur George. Hope you're doing well. I am Joe. Good to hear from you. I'm doing a document, uh, documented essay on the theory that large predatory dinosaurs like T-Rex hunted in packs, and do you think they were intelligent enough to do so in a coordinated fashion? So far, it seems they cannot, but it's suggested that there were groups called gangs. I'm trying to find an article from, I believe his name was Dr. Whitmore, the doctor who created the CT scans for Tyrannosaurus and who you worked with in Jurassic Park. His name is uh, Larry Whitmer, Dr. Whitmer, and he's uh, with Ohio University. Um, also, thanks for answering all my past questions. I'm glad to see you're back and are starting to achieve your goal for the Traveling Museum. Thanks for reading. Hey, Joe, my pleasure. Great to hear from you, buddy. Um, there is a lot of evidence that suggests that large tyrannosaurs and possibly even dinosaurs like Allosaurus and some of the Carcharodontosaurus, the, it, it looks as though those animals did live in groups, uh, family groups. We would refer to them as a pack. A group of meat eaters is called a pack. A group of plant eaters is called a herd. There is evidence they found a large number of Albertosaurus together. They found uh, a variety of Allosaurus. So, in my opinion, the evidence suggests that, yes, these animals lived in family groups. The size of the group would be difficult to understand unless everything died at the same time in the same place. And that doesn't happen very often. But to be an effective predator, especially when you're big like Tyrannosaurus, you've got to be able to have other members of the family help you catch prey. You're so big it's hard to hide. You're so big it's hard to sneak up on animals. So you've got to rely on other ways to catch your prey. Things like ambush or uh, tag team, running um, at different members chasing something around until the animal finally got tired. Um, that takes a coordinated effort and I believe Tyrannosaurus definitely had that. Um, I believe Dr. Whitmer would probably say that based on the size of their brain, it would not be unreasonable for them to do that. Listen to this, here comes a lawnmower driving by. Of course, you know, they didn't start doing this until three seconds after I started. Great, thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, so I believe Dr. Whitmer would probably say that based on the size of the brain, Tyrannosaurus were probably capable of sort of a coordinated family behavior. I can't speak for him, but that would be my best guess. All right, uh, DJ from Napier, New Zealand. Greetings, Dinosaur George. Thank you, DJ. I hope you have been well, and I wish you luck with your school museum idea. Thank you, buddy. I'll show you some of that in just a second. Now, this is my first question to you, and I hope it won't be my last. Well, I hope it won't be either. I was curious if you have a preference towards Gondwana or Laurasian dinosaurs, and if so, why? Wow, wow, wow. Never had this question asked of me before. This is a good one. Never gave it any thought. I guess Gondwana dinosaurs interest me more um, just because there's such a variety but man you know that's a tough question because wow both of those both of those supercontinents produce such magnificent dinosaurs 
You know, honestly, I just like the word Gondwana. I think it sounds cool. <laughs> so there's my answer. <laughs> All right, Ash from London, England. Hello, George. I hope you're fine. I am Ash. Hope you are too. I love raptors and T-Rex. Good choice of dinosaurs. My question is, which of these, these two are the strongest, Spinosaurus or Tyrannosaurus rex? In my opinion, when you're talking about strength, when you're talking about the strength of a dinosaur, it can be difficult to completely understand what their strengths were because we don't have the musculature that demonstrates power. But based on everything I've studied, even though Spinosaurus was a bigger dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus Rex, in my opinion, pound for pound was built a little more heavily. So I believe if you took the same size Spinosaurus and the same size Tyrannosaurus, then in my opinion, Tyrannosaurus would be considerably stronger than Spinosaurus. Um, I've learned my lesson about denigrating Spinosaurus. I get a lot of, get a lot of hate mail from that. Um, so I don't want to say Spinosaurus is not strong. But what I'm saying is, if you took a Spinosaurus and a Tyrannosaurus of the same size, then yes, in my opinion, Tyrannosaurus was stronger. All right, Manuel from Salzburg, Austria. Hello, George, good to see you. Manuel, it's great to hear from you, buddy. Velociraptor, is the Velociraptor as intelligent as they showed in Jurassic Park? Probably not. They, they overdid it a little bit in Jurassic Park, and, and that was just really to, to make the show, mo sure, show more interesting. Uh, so I don't think they were capable of knowing how to open a door. Um, Jurassic Park, I was getting kind of concerned that towards the end, the Raptors are going to be driving a Jeep. They were going to figure out how to use weapons. <laughs> I think that if you wanted to find an animal today that, that Velociraptor is similar to an intellect, maybe it would be a dog or a cat. Now, I, don't th I say maybe because I don't think they're even that smart. Dogs and cats are incredibly smart animals. Um, but Velociraptors lived in a very harsh environment, and yet they survived. And that speaks a lot to how smart these animals were. So I think if you look at a modern house cat or dog, I think that would at least give you some kind of general idea of how intelligent a Velociraptor was. All right, finally, Sandro from, oh boy, how do you pronounce this? Neuheim, Utrecht, Netherlands. Boy, I sound like a Klingon. <laughs> I think I pronounced that right. Neuheim, Utrecht. No, Utrecht, Netherlands. Man, I hope I didn't butcher that, uh, Sandro. Hi, George. I'm glad to hear you're back. I'm glad to be back, buddy. I've been trying to answer this question for a long time. What's the purpose of an outer claw in a theropod talon? Most birds have three claws in the front and one on the back. This is ideal for grabbing onto tree branches and prey. In many different lineages of running birds, on the other hand, they seem to have lost their hind claw, which is an adaptation for running. I can understand why a running flightless predator would lose some of its toe digits, but why didn't it lose its outer claw? Was the claw vestigial or did it serve a purpose? Greetings from Holland, Sandro. What a brilliantly written question. Um, for some of you young guys, vestigial means something that's there but doesn't do anything. Let me give you an example real quick. Uh, this is the arm of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the arm of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. He has two big digits and he has this little tiny digit right here. We call this a vestigial, let me see if I can get that up there. We call this a vestigial digit, which means it doesn't do anything. It basically is a finger that's going away. So the question is, why then do some theropod dinosaurs have that? Well, let's see who I've got back here. I can pull out real quick. Set you right there. Let's look at the foot of a Gorgosaurus. Here's a foot from a Gorgosaurus. All right, here's what he's talking about. He's got three toes, very powerful, big, sharp claws, perfectly designed for grasping. But here's the question. What on earth is this outer toe doing, and why is it back there on the back of the leg? The reason why is because it is becoming vestigial. It's not, it's not a necessary part of the animal. It's not fun it doesn't do anything for hunting. It doesn't do anything like that. It is simply a toe that hasn't disappeared yet. In my opinion, they maintain the three typical bird-like toes because they use these for running, grasping the ground, and grasping prey. This toe ultimately becomes even smaller. If you look at dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex, it becomes even more reduced. And in my opinion, it ultimately would have gone away. Let me set this foot down because it's heavy. It ultimately would have gone away. That toe would have gone away. So although it didn't really serve any purpose, it still remained on there 
because it was simply something left over from its early ancestors. All right, uh, let's cut for a second. Let me take you back in here and let's take a look and let me give you the sneak preview of what I was talking about. See if I can take this camera off without the whole thing falling in on top of my head. Come on now, buddy. All right, here we go. Here we go. First of all, anybody want to guess what this torso is from? This is kind of a tough one. I'll give you a hint. I don't know what the lighting is going to be like in here, but let's see. Here's his head. Anybody want to guess who this critter might be? Elongated neck. Here, I'll do a giveaway. Here's his tail. Flippers. Yes, it is a plesiosaur, my friends. Uh, let's see what else I got in here. This is Raptor Rex. Raptor Rex is a kind of a cool predator. Uh, he's kind of awesome. Let me see if I can turn on a light. Do I have a light? I don't have my light. What a ripoff. Sorry about that. I wish I had my light. Um, let's see. Here's a little Cetacosaurus. Hadrosaur foot. Little tiny unidentified raptor. Nasty little dude. Uh, foot claw from a Diplodocus. Who else I have down here? I've got a duckbill dinosaur. Lower jaw of a Camarasaurus. An early crocodilian. Uh, there is a uh, Struthiomimus. Mosasaur skull, a giant, the back of the head of a giant sea turtle, the underbelly of a sea turtle, this monstrosity up here on the top, that is Torvosaurus, beside him is Gorgosaurus, down there are some jaws, down there at the very bottom is an upside down head of um, uh, Sorphaganax. There is the top of the skull of a Camarasaurus, and there is another oddball plesiosaur. So these are some of the very first pieces that are coming in for my traveling exhibit. Um, I've got the real big shipments coming in, and when I say big, I'm talking about hundreds of individual pieces. So as those pieces arrive, I will make it a point to get those up and in front of you guys so you can see them. The lawnmower is here. That's just great. The lawnmower's here and the truck is driving by. So that is it for today. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Fill it out and send it in. I'll try my best to answer. We get a lot of questions. I can't do them all. For everybody out there, I always appreciate the courtesy and uh, the good manners. And for all you young people, make sure to practice your reading because nothing is more important than having good reading skills. I'm Dinosaur George, and this has been a lot of fun. I'll see you soon. Take care.